I want to talk about the idea of Star Wars taking a hiatus. Welcome to Unleashed. And don't forget to join us on Patreon for early access and exclusive content. Here are the guys. Welcome to Unleashed on the Rebels Gone Podcast Network. I'm James. Thanks for stopping by. Give us a like. Comment down below. I want to hear your thoughts. I respond to every single one of them. Love talking Star Wars. Love having these conversations. And if you're new here, hit subscribe. and We can continue the conversations on and on and on. I don't want to know how you feel about what's going on with Star Wars because it's been a very controversial subject the last little while. On Monday, we did a flying casual live show. We do it every Monday discussing the, the media backlash on Star Wars now. Like, Star Wars is dead. The media says, is, is Lucasfilm bad at Star Wars? Are they bad for Star Wars? Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe f*** yourself. Because everyone's losing their minds over it. Most people online, I believe... The common thread is that, yes, they are bad at it, but the reality, I think, is pretty much everybody would be bad at Star Wars because I don't think anybody can agree on what exactly Star Wars is. But that's not what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the idea of Star Wars taking a hiatus. This is something that many of you have brought up to my attention, something that I have brought up on videos in the past as well. Should Star Wars take a hiatus? I think the ultimate answer is yes, I think the reality is it never will and it can't because they don't want to have diminished returns. We'll get into that in in a little bit. I'm listening. I'm going to go through the good, the bad, and the ugly of Star Wars taking a hiatus. Not an indefinite hiatus, a brief hiatus. But I'm going to bring up all these ideas. I do think there's a way that Lucasfilm Disney can go about this hiatus without us even noticing that Star Wars has taken a hiatus. I think they have enough in the can to distract us for a little while. Plus they have animated material that always seems to, the animated material always seems to hit. They seem to hit with the animated material. Ah, you missed. Wait. What's the difference between that and live action? I have a few theories I'm not going to talk about today, but theories, you know, some things that I think people are a little bit more lenient towards animation. and, And there's a whole other video for another day that I will go into that. But I want to talk about, should it go on a hiatus? And I just said, yes, it should. Uh, because we all need a, a reset on on Star Wars, right? In, in, back in the OT, it was every three years, fan, the sequel trilogy or the prequel trilogy, every three years. And then Disney purchased them and they said, for this foreseeable future, you'll be getting, or I think they said forever, you'll be getting a, a Star Wars movie every single year. And then, of course, you know, Last Jedi, Solo, Rise of Skywalker. And uh, we haven't had one now going on five years, five years. And by the time we get one, it'll be seven years. That's that's a theatrical hiatus where people are going to be excited to go back. Have they been diluting the brand on Disney Plus? I think that's another big issue. But Disney Plus has to be lumped into the theatrical stuff right now. Obviously, I'm not talking about a hiatus from books, comics, or anything to that effect. But I'm talking about theatrical and disney plus because we have been inundated with disney plus content every year we've gotten uh one one or two one or two shows every year live action that is and it might be a little bit too much they might be rushing it to us there might be some good ideas i think some of the stuff we've had in that hasn't quite landed has had a lot of really good ideas but it hasn't quite landed another happy landing and is that because it's been rushed or is that because there's too many cooks in the kitchen up the higher ups the the old uh, the shareholders is there too many of them making the decisions yelling down at Lucas I'm like hey hey you know obviously Kenobi the fight is done Kenobi was supposed to be a movie I think it was supposed to be a trilogy of movies and it said they chopped it up and they fleshed out things that shouldn't be fleshed out in really mediocre ways and they let Kenobi kind of sit on the sidelines and we didn't get to see a real true Kenobi show but with all that said. There was a lot of really awesome lore building and moments with Kenobi and Leia and moments with Kenobi and Vader. There were things within that show that you're like, this is spectacular. And then a second later, just like, you know, they forget what makes Star Wars Star Wars. And I think Donald Glover said the best. Star Wars is fun. You got to put the fun in Star Wars. I think it should be fun. I just want it to be fun. Like, as a Star Wars fan myself, like, I think it's important that there's just... It just needs to be more fun being a hiatus obviously would do Star Wars very well for the fans because it would let the fans cleanse. So let's go into the good, the bad and the ugly of Star Wars taking a hiatus. 
Let's start with the good creative reset. A hiatus would allow Lucasfilm to regroup and refocus on storytelling, giving writers and directors time to craft deeper, more coherent plots. This break could prevent rush productions, ensuring the future projects are higher quality. Fan excitement. Absence makes the heart grow fonder. Taking a break from constant content releases could reignite the anticipation when Star Wars returns. The hype would likely be greater, bringing back a sense of event cinema and TV. New visions and voices. It provides the opportunity to rethink the creative direction, potentially bringing in fresh talent to explore innovative ideas, such as eras like the Old Republic, let's say, or revitalizing fan-favorite characters with fresh narratives. Luke Skywalker is a character that I think needs to be fleshed out. But beyond that, I think we need to see more Ezra. We need to see more Sabine. I think those characters, Hera maybe, but those characters in particular, I think they need to be fleshed out more. We are getting Ahsoka Season 2, so maybe it'll happen there. But I think those are very, I think they're very well-written characters in the animated series Rebels, but they didn't translate that in that respect in Ahsoka, right? They were a little bit under... Uh, whelming underwritten in Ahsoka and if you were new to those characters did they have the impact that they had if you knew them from the TV show I'm not quite sure that they did focus on originality the hiatus could encourage Lucasfilm to develop more original stories avoiding the over-reliance on existing characters like Luke Leia or Palpatine with time they could introduce new characters and worlds that bring back the magic of discovery and with Ahsoka, like I just said, they brought in Balin, Skull, and Shin Hati, who are two of, in my opinion, the best characters we've gotten in Disney-era Star Wars. I think even for the Acolyte, for as much as I wasn't a fan of the Acolyte and all of its flaws, I think The Stranger really took a stranglehold on that series. I think Manny Jacinto did a great job also. And I think that's a character that you can progress on in the story, maybe keep them separate from the events of the Acolyte, and we don't have to revisit that because I don't think they ever will, but you can keep that character going because he was a very intriguing character with a very good performance. And I think there would be a lot of interest if they found a way to, to utilize that and make it happen. But you have to sit in a room, dim the lights a little bit and just come up with an idea. And, and don't just come up with like, we need to put the stranger in something or Balin and Shin in something. Be like, why? Why are they in this something? I think, th I think that's really what they have to come down to on this hiatus if they were to take one is come up with the why are we telling these stories? Why? Tell me why. And on the bad side of things, a loss of momentum. The franchise has been riding high with shows like The Mandalorian and Ahsoka. A hiatus could halt the momentum built up from the recent successes, making it harder to recapture audiences' attention when Star Wars returns. But of course, you have just the accolade, which almost put the brakes on it, right? It almost last jedi the Disney Plus side of Star Wars. And so while you have a loss of momentum, it could, this could also be a good thing, right? Because it could help you propel yourself back into gaining momentum because people are like, maybe they start to revisit the old shows, the old movies that they know and love. I like it a lot. Fan base disengagement. While some fans would eagerly anticipate a comeback, others could lose interest. You were the chosen one! In a landscape where Marvel, DC, and other franchises continue to churn out content, Star Wars could be overshadowed by competition and lose relevance. Lost opportunities. A hiatus might delay projects that are already in development, some that we aren't even aware of. Delays in the timeline could frustrate fans who are already invested in ongoing storylines. Merchandising and financial hit. Without a new release, Without new releases, Star Wars' massive merchandise machine could suffer. No new movies or series means fewer toy sales, limited edition collectibles, and other revenue streams that Disney depends on. But also, Disney's terrible at that, right? I mean, that's true. I think, you know, and I keep saying, bring back the tie-in books, bring back figures, bring back collectibles. If you bring back all these things, shirts, have all these. I mean, Brock sent me a thing from Walmart the other day, and it was the Droids Animated Show. The Droids Animated Show. 40 years ago. The newest merchandise that he could find was from 40 was from a show 40 years ago for Star Wars. Bring it back. Begun. The Clone War has. And now the ugly, diminished cultural impact. In an era dominated by rapid content production, a long hiatus could mean that Star Wars is no longer the dominant cultural force it once was. The lack of new material could allow other franchises to take its place in the cultural zeitgeist. Increased division within the fandom. Star Wars fandom is already greatly divided due to differing opinions on recent films 
I don't need to say what they are. A hiatus might exasperate this as fans debate over whether the franchise's next steps should be during the downtime. Risk of a messy comeback. If the hiatus doesn't result in a clear creative vision or if the return projects are not well executed, it could lead to a disastrous comeback. Expectations would be high and anything less than stellar could further alienate fans and critics. Missed windows for key stories. Taking a break might mean missing the perfect moment to explore certain characters or stories. For example, Daisy Ridley in the Skywalker saga could age out of the roles or lose interest, and the continuity of stories in the Mandoverse or post-sequel trilogy could become more disjointed. A Star Wars hiatus would have both positive and negative outcomes with the potential to either renew the franchise's legacy or risk diminishing its influence permanently. It would all depend on how well Lucasfilm uses that time to plan a return worthy of a galaxy far, far away. So ultimately, I, look, here's what I do. I shoot the Ray movie right now. You wait. You don't release it. You wait. You wait. And then when people have come around on Ray, or maybe you've got back in their good graces, then you release it. I think a hiatus ultimately, though, would be very good. And the way you can, and you can do that right now without even taking. Uh, a, an official hiatus you have uh, coming up you have skeleton crew in december you have andor season two next year so if you stick with bob Iger sticks with the plan there's one new show a year so we have skeleton crew at the end of this year and or next year ahsoka the following year plus mandalorian grogu uh that would be that would be 2026 right so <laughs> all those now all of a sudden that's taking us a, a year and a bit from where we are right now where you can sit back and you can do, you know, Feige, I believe, does these retreats. All these companies do retreats. I'm sure Star Wars does as well. But you have a retreat. You go somewhere. You have, you find out who the top dogs are that you're using. Never tell me the odds. Whoever your top dog is, you figure out a top dog. You figure out somebody that all storylines have to go through. And I think you still utilize your store group because there's a lot of information that I think they have that could be used well with them. But I think also you tell them not to be so lenient with the lore i think it's like if this is this this is this you there's no wishy-washy i mean okay you know what no stick to your guns be like this is the lore if this is what happened this is the history of star wars the future of star wars whatever we know it we dictate it and if you want to change that tough nuts that's what they should do but then you have to so you figure out who's on top you have your story group there to figure it out and then you have some creative team. Like the Mandalorian season one, the most genius thing they did was obviously Favreau wrote all the scripts, sent them to Filoni. Filoni gave notes he went back. Filoni finished writing them. Or Favreau finished writing them. But then he hired all these amazing directors. All these amazing directors came in and directed episodes of The Mandalorian. And in that time, we got a kick-ass season one. And all these directors, and then they did those round table, the gallery show, and they did all these round tables, and everybody got very excited. And it was a lot of fun and you got to see the inner workings of it and how they all love Star Wars and their perspectives on Star Wars and what they brought to the table. And I think you do something like that. You have a group of directors. I, honestly, and I said this on my Saving Star Wars show, I would grab those directors, put them in the room. The ones that you got to do Mandalorian. The one that maybe some of the skeleton crew ones, maybe. But the, your key directors who have been there and done multiple episodes and they are in your grip you know you, they're in your little click if you will and you say this we're making movies for the next 10 years shows for the next five 10 years whatever it is we're coming up with a plan here's our plan and then you say these are the these are the movie events these are tv events and divvy it up divvy it I know it's way easier said than done, and I'm not in that room, so I don't know what's going on. But I think they've established such great creative team over on the Mandover side of things, like the Mandalorian specifically side of things, that I don't know how you don't bring them back into a grander scale, a more epic scale. I think that's what works because the Star Wars franchise, as much as it's, you know, it's like I love it being film, it's got to be film. I want more film, but it still has to be treated almost like a showrunner with a television show, and they have to oversee it. And be like, this is the scope of what we're doing. And now you guys are all hired to kind of do your individual one. And, you know, the 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 looks of them can change a little bit more than they did on the TV side for the films. But they still have to look like Star Wars. And I think one thing with Solo, and I love Solo, is it doesn't really look like Star Wars. Like the cinematography is a little dark and bland and drabby. And people were turned off by it, I think. So I think you kind of come up with the look, the feel. You bring people in. You do it. Marvel does a very similar thing with Feige up at top and he hires his people. But they, they have a team established already. They have a team ready to go. And that's why I think it's exciting that for them 
it's an exciting time for Star Wars because they can utilize this team and make it work and make us all excited for Star Wars once again. And a hiatus would let all of this kind of come to fruition, right? Because some of them might not want to do it. Some of them might not be able to do it, but they can all come in and be like, this is our plan. This is what we're having. This is what, this is our goal, our end game. What do you think? Everyone signs off. They're like, good, good, good. You present it to the board. The board's like, well, we make dumb decisions, so I don't know about that. But, you know, whatever. They do whatever, and you move on. So I think ultimately a highest is a great idea. I think they have I think they have the building blocks in place for Star Wars to be strong and, and utilize that. But it's all about getting to that point. And I just think taking a break, taking a reset, sitting back, relaxing. They could sit in the cabin and watch Ahsoka at night. <laughs> during it, you know, season two of Ahsoka, that is, and come up with it. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Should Star Wars take a hiatus? And are you f- excited for the future of the franchise or not? <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for watching. This is Unleashed on the Rebels Come Podcast Network. I'm James. Give us a like and a subscribe. May the force of others be with you. Luke, we have what they grow beyond. Hey scumbags, thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up on our video. As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Rebel Scum Podcast, for all the latest videos.